G'day everybody, uh, welcome back to Revit LT 2016 and the introductory um, series of lessons. So we're into lesson number eight, okay, um, which is going to be not building but actually starting to look at the annotation um, documenting side of the software. Um, but just a very very quick recap from the last um, thing. So if I spin into my 3D view, okay, okay. The last job we did, or well, the last um, presentation, okay, we added a very very simple generic 300 millimeter floor uh, using sketch mode, and um, showed you a couple of tips and tricks with regards to what happens with you know drawing those sketch mode lines to produce a 3D object. Okay, so. Um, that's where we're at. So the next stage, we've really only got a couple more to, of lessons to go in this series. Okay, so the first one to go, pretty much, is how to do some very basic documentation. So very introductory sort of stuff. Okay, so I've got three um, things to look at. Okay, number one is text. Okay, so how to apply text to a um, to a project. Number two is the room tag function, um, and how to apply some basic dimensions. Okay, so looking at the dimension tool. Okay, I'm not really enjoying that message when it pops up, but never mind. Okay, so let's scroll in. So I mentioned text first, but actually I might just do the room tag first. So a common question is once you've annotated, or once you've drawn up a, a project and you say you're at this sort of stage, you need to start identifying what is what each room is about. Okay, so there are, there are a couple of ways, I suppose, to do this. Okay, the smart way is to use in the architecture tab in the room and area section here, okay, is to use the room button, okay, or the room command. So if I hover on there, we see the tag of RM as the short command. But really, all I need to do here, well, what this one does is basically it looks for walls, okay, so it looks for ways that a room has been identified or separated from another room. Best way to do that is with a wall. Okay, and that will automatically plonk down some information. So let's give it a go. So left click on the room. Okay, tells us a little bit of information on our um, options bar, but not really anything that we need to worry about right now. Now, as you can see, if I float it around out in the ether, it's not really finding an awful lot. However, if I drag that in here to this room here, if I zoom in a little bit, Okay, so we get a light blue line all the way around the perimeter of the room, and it sort of look about it binds itself into there. So it's quite a nice little thing. So if, now what I need to do is go left tap, left click to drop this tag. Okay, room number one. Okay, if I bring that over to this next room. Okay, left click, drop, room number two. So Revit's doing a bit of counting for us. Okay, left click, room number three and so on and so forth. So if I click all rooms there, escape out of there. So Revit has identified six rooms. Okay, very handy. Um, a, a situation where we might want to divide a room or identify two areas within a room, okay, but we don't want to draw any additional walls. Okay, we have a room separator. Okay, so this is a little drawing tool, and this just basically draws a line, uh, an invisible wall, effectively. So if I left click on that, let's just say if I draw across here, we see a light blue dashed line. Okay, or the cyan color, I guess. Okay, left click there, draw that line. Now, if I hover over this. Thing that we can now see that, that room, room five, has been bound, okay, been stopped by that room separator line in there. So I can now go in here, I could go room tag in here, and there we go, room seven. So, a common uh, 
use for this would be like in an open plan house and we've got kitchen, dining, um, all of that sort of stuff. All in one open space. There are no walls separating these areas but we want to clearly identify them. Okay, so and by default if I click on this tag here, if I uh, click on the tag, you've got to click on the tag itself. Okay, click on this down arrow. There's a couple of, th yeah, there's three options here, so we've just as long as we've got the room area tag, we've got a room tag with the area, so if I left click on that, what it does is tell me what the the, the net area of, or the gross area of that, that room is, which is quite handy, so um, 16 metres squared, how about that? Okay, I can click on this one here, grab that one there, room tag with volume, there we go. 101.52 meters cubed. So a couple of nice little things that we can do there. Now the big thing is you, at the moment we can't have with the with the default tag we can't show root volume and area at the same time without going into this family and hacking it a little bit and making it do things. Um, we're not going to be doing that. So um, but look, th this is just an introductory type stuff. Okay. Now. In Australia, um, possibly in New Zealand and things like that, uh, certainly with town planning um, drawings, um, you know, stuff that we send to the council before we apply for building permits, okay, we quite often need to identify a room, perhaps not by its area, but by its approximate length by breadth, depth, um, dimensions. Okay, in town planning, we don't generally try. We try not to over document and over dimension. Okay, so we just want to chuck in a couple of basic. Um, you know, bits of information. So, this room here, um, 16 meters squared, it looks like it's about three and a half, or you know, let's say four by four, just for argument's sake. Okay, actually, no, let's do this right. Let's look for a measurement tool. We haven't done that yet. Okay, so if I take my mouse all the way to the top up here, okay, we'll see a little measuring tool. Now you'll see here where it says measure between two references, you'll see in the brackets there Q1. Okay, that's a short code that I've created. Okay, so that's my short Q because it's a command I use all the time. It's right by where my left hand sits on the keyboard. A um, little trick I learned with via Microsoft, MicroStation actually. But if I go left click on that, okay, left click there, left click there, so it's just, you, you very much like the measuring tool. So that one says it's three and a half wide. I'm just going to write this down, 3.5 meters wide. The reason I write it down is I've got a terrible memory, so I have to write everything down. By four and a half down. Okay, write that down. So, like I said, room tag will give us the, the brutal, the area, okay, we may need to document something a little bit differently. So we could use um, um, a text version or a text way of doing this at this stage. So again, it a, may not be the perfect way of doing things. Um, we're not after perfection right now, we're after about learning basic commands. So the text command, we now go out of architecture tab at the top here. We go one, two, three, four, we go into annotate. Okay, in the middle we have the text zone. So what we want to do here is we want to click on text. Okay, the short key is TX. Okay. In the properties, it'll say text area one millimeter. Okay, it's a little bit too small to see. Click on there, and we can see a series of default um, um, text styles. You know, font style sizes and things like that. So let's uh, uh, wait for about area three point five, I believe. So you just choose that one there, okay. So text in, in Revit is very simple. It's very nice, okay. So left click to start the the text command. So left click now. We're now we're in sort of a very basic editor, okay. So I might call this the bathroom for argument's sake, okay. If I hit enter, all it's going to do is go down a line. But if I left click out of there, that finishes the command. So there we go. So now, if I click on the text itself, okay, we get three bits of information that we can manipulate immediately with the text. Number one, in the top left-hand corner, there is the drag button or a move button. Okay, so I can just 
click that and I can just drag that around and, and move it without being overly accurate but I can position that text quite happily okay on the top right hand corner there is a rotate button so if I left click and hold the button down and then swivel I can rotate the, the text anyway you will notice there I went so sort of, you know 180 degrees whatever upright went 90 degrees that's okay as soon as I flicked it around the other way it went back upright okay it didn't think so we there there is a function where Revit basically by default it wants all the text to be reading up or in a certain direction in line with the dimension so it follows a few architectural protocols okay we can force it to do the opposite of that um, I generally advise against it okay um, I believe this is something that they've got right so so we've got the bathroom there and like I said now I can go double click I might go in there okay very much like any other sort of text editor now I can get hit the enter button okay type go back to my notes here say 3.5 by 4.5 meters okay so let me check like, big thing in, um, where I am in Victoria town planning if you give them the area quite often the town planners like to know appreciate the scale of a room by knowing the approximate dimensions okay so um, yeah they do get their rulers out occasionally measure as well so the trouble is with this one here this this is just a text box it has no other function all it is it's, it's just a little bit of notation okay it's not visible anywhere and it doesn't behave in any other way these room tags and we'll go we'll we will look at these later on okay I can schedule these I can as they can read areas volumes we can do a lot with room tags okay so it's some really cool stuff there um, we'll go into that in a lot more depth later on okay so that's the text function okay so what I might do is I might go TX now I'm going to check out one more text button I might go Arial try another maybe Arial 25 out here and I might just go out here left click okay just and just for argument's sake I might just do a notation that we're saying that this is a brick veneer wall okay so there's my thing I need to maybe compress that a little bit so I just use these grips or the drag buttons either side so automatic Revit will automatically um, you know push and pull this we've got a justification here so left center or right um, and the other really cool thing we've got here for when we're up in here so there's our justification and all that sort of jazz we've got the add leader buttons okay so we get four options to start okay so we've got the choice of um, straight leader or a curve leader so if I go click so on the right hand side here just automatically brings up a leader for us okay so I can drag that leader out there point to there if I move the text drag the text around you'll see that the leader automatically gets a kink okay and I can even drag that out and I can change the elbow and the and the bend in the text and the leader so if I click on that now big thing with the Revit leaders okay once you're using one type straight with them it's not going to let you mix and match them so you can't have a, a curved leader with a straight leader on the same piece of text okay so in a way they're sort of encouraging good um, architectural practice practice and annotation practice you really should have one style of leader that you agree with and use that okay you can have as many leaders as you like okay nice and easy if you want to take them away there's a minus button there and it takes away them in the sequence that they arrive nice and easy stuff okay so you pick that up move it around oh, there. we've got a double kink in there if I move that over we get all sorts of crazy stuff happening and that's cool you know lots of practice so as most of you will be aware if you've um, been in the industry for a while annotation is uh, this is all the fun stuff this was the build this was fun it didn't take all that long though now we've got to get into the annotation so we're always going to try and try to find ways to speed this up because uh, let's be perfectly honest it's uh, pretty boring okay it's important but it's boring so we've got to find a way of speeding things up so room tags number one way of speeding things up okay 
Next bit of um, annotation to talk about is dimensioning. Okay, so we're st now we're back in here. So we're just going to punch up a couple of basic dim dimensions here. So we're still in annotate. Okay, now what we want to do is we're going to the aligned tool. There. So DI is the command, short key for command for um, dimensions. Now a couple of thing key things here. So in the options bar, okay. It says here that we're picking the wall center line. Let's click on that. For this type of project, I would be inclined to be looking for wall faces. If I was in a commercial project and I was dealing with columns and you know brackets and all this sort of stuff, I'd be using the center lines because that's and grids because that's what's important. Project like this, we have no grids. We're we're basically just dimensioning straight off the house. Okay, pick individual things. We can pick entire walls if we wanted to, but I just want to pick individual references. So wall faces, individual references. Okay. Now, so what we all we need to do it's a left again left click function. So we're just going to click pick this one here. So all I need to do is I just go left click, and what it does is it picks up the entire face of the wall. It's not picking up a point. It's picking up an entire object. So it's dimensioning the object. Okay. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick up that wall there. Left click. There we go. 10 point, yeah, was it 10.55? Okay, while I'm still in the function, okay, see it's still looking for a dimension. I can go all the way over to the end here, left click, bang, and pick up the other t the other articulation there, point there. Okay, now to stop the dimension command, you just got to click away where it's not going to measure anything. So just where my cursor is right now, in thin air, left click, drop. Okay, done. So I'll, re re we'll, I'll repeat that, okay, what I'll do is I'll pick up another string in here, okay, so I'll pick up a bit more information. So again, go back to annotate, align to dimension, I can zoom a little bit closer here, so I'm going to pick up that one there, so I'm going to determine the thickness of the wall there, the length of the room, thickness of that wall, the thickness of that wall, okay, come up here and just sort of line them up a little bit, and there we go. Okay. If I make a mistake with um, a dimension, a I can just delete the whole string. If I want to delete just one string or one element of a dimension, if I hover over the dimension string and then tap the tab key once, it'll pick up that dimension only, and then I can hit the delete button or DE, which is the other delete command. Okay, so Control Z to undo what you've done there. Okay, so we can dimension up all this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so dimensioning is nice and simple, um, very effective. It's nice and quick. And the other beauty of the re the dimension here is that if we move a wall, because the dimension is associated with the wall and not a point, the dimensions update with that movement, and that will happen every time. So it's pretty handy. So um, it's not going to um, it's going to look after you, okay. The other big thing is that Revit doesn't really let you fudge the results, okay. So whatever you draw, generally that's what Revit wants you to draw. So just as a warning there, like you can go into AutoCAD. Um, I don't know about the other pieces of software, but you can go into AutoCAD and you can overwrite these dimensions and you can make them say something else. And you can change the numbers and you can make them and make them measure something different to what it is, but it causes trouble later on. Revit will not let you do that, okay? So it's it's a bit smart. There are workarounds, but uh, I'm not going to show you just yet. All right. So that's the basic um, guts of, uh, of some very simple annotation techniques. So we've got room tags, we've got some text there, some more text there, and some basic dimensioning. Okay, so I'm going to scroll out now. We're going to say uh, sayonara. Um, I'm going to pause right now. We're going to stop. Upload. The next one, um, the next video, we're going to basically publish this onto um, a title block. And that will be the basics at the bones of the lesson. Okay, see you later.